What is up, you guys? My name is Austin Marks, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I have a special guest with me. This is Alicia. She is a licensed health consultant. Um, she was a respiratory therapist for a little while. She also traveled. She works a lot with travelers, um, nurses, as well as respiratory therapists. Um, I'm going to let her introduce herself then. Thanks, Austin. I appreciate it. Hey, guys. My name is Alicia. Um, I was an RRT for close to two years. I uh, traveled for almost a full year of that. Um, I'm now currently working in insurance. I have a 215 license. My license just allows me to kind of shop everything and anything outside of employer options. Um, a little bit about me, that way you guys know who you're speaking to. I went to Clarion University first, right out of high school for um, bio pre-med, thought I wanted to be a doctor. Then I switched to nursing, because then I was like, yeah, being a doctor is you know, too much time. Went to nursing and then decided I wanted to specialize a little bit more. Um, long backstory as to you know how I kind of discovered respiratory, but ended up doing a little bit more research into it. I transferred out of CCAC after three semesters, or, sorry, transferred out of Clarion after three semesters. Um, and then I ended up actually going to a community college called CCAC or Community College of Allegheny County that is in Pittsburgh, PA. So I went there, it's a two-year program, got my associates. Um, after getting my associates, I decided to work at Mercy, UPMC Mercy, Mercy Hospital in Pittsburgh. Um, worked there for just a, a little bit over a year. Um, decided I wanted to start to travel. I traveled for, like I said, almost a full year. And then decided I wanted a dog. So I went home and lived at home with my parents for a little while and um, got my not so little Great Dane, um, Nala. She's about 120 pounds now. So, you know, that's always fun. Um, with respiratory, I absolutely loved it and I absolutely still love it. And I would go back in a heartbeat. Um, at the time when I went back home, started working obviously in respiratory again, but not traveling. And it was a matter of overworked and overworked and underpaid to say the least. I mean, pretty much anywhere with respiratory to begin with. And the, then you had COVID in there. So kind of started doing some research, kind of looking into this, that, and the other thing. Um, at that point, I was in school at Youngstown State. It was completely online. I was doing a dual major, my bachelor's in respiratory, and then my master's in uh, business administration. So I kind of started, you know, taking those classes, um, was doing that the entire last few months of my um, respiratory career. And then yeah, kind of overworked and underpaid and decided to look into other options. I saw a, a listing for a health insurance agent and I was like, no. Ended up applying for a job, which I thought was a pharmaceutical sales job. Turns out it was a um, licensed benefit specialist, me. Um, applied for it, kind of, you know, dabbled in it for a little bit. Didn't really do, I took like one little toe in the water and I wasn't really sure about it. And then I, um, decided to go all in and stop with respiratory. I picked up and moved from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to um, Tampa, Florida, St. Pete, Florida. And now I'm down here and I'm self-employed. I, yeah, I'm a licensed health insurance consultant now. So it's me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's a little bit about me that way you guys know who, who's on the phone with y'all or, you know, who's on the Zoom call. Um, so my experience personally traveling, it was, so I'll tell you first kind of where I, Okay. where I've been and kind of the roadmap, I guess, so to speak, and the feelings and everything that came along with my experiences with it. Um, so I first went, came down to Florida. I was actually in Jacksonville. So about close to five hours away from where I'm living now. Um, went over to Jacksonville. I have some family over there. So I figured, you know, for a travel assignment, we'll go down, we'll spend some time with some family. Um, that way you don't get like that whole homesick feeling, so to speak. Um, so I went over to Jacksonville. I worked at Memorial Hospital of Jacksonville for technically 14 weeks or so, kind of, but my contract was 13 weeks. Um, it was awesome there. I loved it. I loved the people that I worked with. Um, the My patients were not exactly what I was used to dealing with. So I come from working at a level one trauma burn center. So I'm used to like the blood guts and all of the fun crazy stuff. And I love that. I love the adrenaline rush and stuff. Um, when I went down to Jacksonville, it was a little bit of a switch up for me. I was mostly working on the floors. I wasn't really in the units. I worked in units or down in the ER since day one of being a respiratory therapist. As soon as I got my license, they were like, all right, CVIC, you go. 
Um, so when I went down to Jacksonville, it was a complete switch up. Um, it was incredible. I met so many great people and got to learn some pretty neat things that I didn't know about. Um, what was the, not the biggest downfall for me, but I didn't really like working the floors. I felt like it was very repetitive. Um, that's a personal thing though. Some people love them and then I wish that I did, but I just, I didn't. Um, so I was sad when that was over, but during that time, it was kind of hard because I was adjusting to the first time really being away from my immediate family. I had other family down there, but as far as my, my immediate family, that's the first time I've ever been away from them that it's not just, you know, a 45 minute drive home. It's, you got to hop on a plane, you got to plan a trip, you got to do all that. And at the time, my parents weren't able to come down and visit. So I kind of was, it was, it was kind of hard um, to say the least, but it was definitely a learning and growing experience, which was super nice. Um, yeah, so that was where I first met. And then after that, I was kind of looking at different contracts and kind of thinking of really where I wanted to go next. Um, my game plan for my next part, my next place was mostly to kind of see where I wanted to move. I knew I didn't want to live in Pennsylvania the rest of my life. I knew that I did want to live in Florida. wasn't a really big, wasn't a huge fan of Jacksonville. Um, so my next two picks technically were St. Pete, Tampa, Clearwater. It's pretty much all one triangle um, there, or it was Miami. So it was kind of a toss up. Um, talked to my recruiter, got in touch with him, went through everything with him. Um, and there was actually a job opening. And now it's literally so funny because it's 15 minutes, not even 10 minutes on the road from where I live. Um, it's called Baycare Hospital and it's in Seminole and which is technically St. Pete area, but I started there. It was a little bit more up my alley. Um, a little bit more fast paced, still not like my level, like mercy will always hold a special place in my heart. Um, but yeah, it definitely was just a little bit more fast paced, um, a little bit more of what I liked, what I wanted. Um, yeah, I worked there for 13 weeks. I actually ended up meeting my current boyfriend now down here while I was traveling, which is kind of cool. Um, we live together. It's great. We've been together forever now. It feels like, um, yeah. So then I came over here, I worked here for a while and then I stayed after for a little bit longer just because I really liked the area. I kind of was looking around. I wanted to see if there was any apartments or anything like that, kind of just getting familiar with it. Um, so that was my next assignment. At that point, it was getting a little bit easier because I just, I shouldn't say feelings wise, but feelings wise. Um, yeah, it was, it was definitely getting a little bit easier, but it was also that homesick where you want to see your friends and you want to do all that, but you also want to come back. So I knew at that point that that's where I wanted to live. And that was my main goal of traveling was kind of figuring out where I wanted to live. I didn't know. I, I was like, I, I want to live out of, I don't want to live in Pennsylvania the rest of my life, but I want to go somewhere. So that was kind of my, my biggest key point of doing that. So it's kind of neat that, you know, I was able to travel and find where I'm living now. And hopefully one day we have a family here. Um, and then after seminar, after Baycare, I went up to North Carolina. Um, so Jacksonville, I'm, trying to make sure, I'm going to make sure I have these right. Jacksonville and then Seminole. And then, yeah, North Carolina was the next one. Um, I worked for H. HCA Healthcare. It's a, um, like a mission hospital. I think I was always confused by it, but yeah, mission hospital. Um, it's in Asheville, North Carolina. I went there next because my brother lived there for quite some time. So him, his wife and his three kids, I figured I would go over there, kind of visit with them, kind of that whole, you know, homesick and you want some familiar faces. Um, so I went up there for another 13 weeks and it was if I wouldn't have moved here, I would have moved there. And the only reason why I moved here is there's absolutely no snow, no chance of getting snow for the most part um, and all the palm trees. So, so yeah, Seminole, I was down here at Bay Care. Um, I absolutely loved it. I love the area a lot. Met my boyfriend, so we decided, well, I decided eventually to move down here. Um, he's from New York and eventually, you know, after a long distance for a while, we decided to kind of do the move together. Um, like I said, I love the area. So now I live literally, it's a straight shot and it's 10 minutes down the road from the hospital that I worked at. And it's really neat because when I moved down here uh, this past July, I it was middle of July is when I moved down. Um, I was able to reconnect, <clears throat> excuse me, with some of the friends and people that I met at Bay Care. So I came down here and I, I knew people already, but so it wasn't completely blindsided, but you know, for the most part, it was, it was super cool that I was able to find that my home that I live now. And like I said, I want to 
I want to raise my family here one day. So I hope that that's possible. And it's cool that traveling and if I wouldn't have traveled, I wouldn't have found that out. I probably never would have came to Seminole, Florida, which is outside of St. Outside of St. Pete, still considered uh, St. Petersburg. But yeah, I never would have found that all just from traveling. So I always recommend when people ask, you know, should, should I travel? What should I do? Should I take this assignment? I always say, yeah, because you never know what you're going to get out of it. And here we are. Yeah. So from North Carolina, I decided I wanted to come back home. I wanted to get my dog, which is now what I have my, my little great Dane. Um, so I made the decision. I was like, I'm going to get a dog. I saved up all this money. I, you know, big reason why I feel like a lot of our teams travel is because one, we don't get paid enough to begin with. So we started taking the travel assignments to make more money. Um, and a lot of that money, I feel like goes towards student loans or anything like that. So for me personally, I was able to, you know, pay off some loans. It was incredible, save some money, went back home. Um, at that point, it was probably, a, well, I went home for Christmas. And that's when I went, actually moved back home, moved back home, not living out of my car, bouncing from place to place anymore. Um, went back home. It was probably mid-January-ish when COVID kind of started getting talked about. This was this past year. Yeah. So not four months ago or five months ago, a year and a half ago. Yeah. Yeah. 2020. That's it. 2020 um, of January is when COVID kind of really started, you know, snowballing slowly. Um, didn't see any COVID patients. We were kind of preparing for the worst. I went back to my home hospital up north figured why not, you know, while I decide if I want to start traveling again or where I want to go next. Um, at least I have that back home. I kept it as like a PRN position. They told me that if I, whenever I'm ready to come back, if the position's open, I can still have it. If it's not open, then it's kind of, sorry, like that's, we have to fill that position regardless. So it's not really on us to hold your position if you're not going to be working here. Um, and I feel like a lot of home hospitals do that. So went back home, luckily it was still there, um, started working. And then that's when COVID really kind of took over and I worked it for probably a solid, well, I completely stopped. I started getting my insurance license in February, Mar in March is when I got my insurance license. And then um, May was my last month at Mercy. And then July is when I moved down. And then that's when I fully got into insurance. That's when I was like, okay, I'm done with respiratory for a little while. Um, with my dog, it was just too hard and the move and everything. I was like starting something up that quick. It's gonna be difficult. I already have my license. I'm already contracted. I might as well just kind of ride this one out and see what happens. And now I absolutely love it. Um, I get to talk to my RTs, my nurses all the time. So I kind of get the best of both worlds in that sense. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of my travel experience with it. That's awesome. And that's definitely something I agree with for many people thinking about traveling is go all over the place, see what you like, um, because you're from Pennsylvania and now you're in Florida. Huge okay. difference, just a uh, difference with everything. And that's what I highly suggest for everyone is just kind of go wherever. That's it. Be super flexible with it. Don't don't worry about you know, well, I wanted to go to St. P, but they're placing me in Tampa when there's a 20 minute difference. Um, if it's anywhere close, but it's everything you want, it's just not in the exact location. I always recommend just doing it. And then either a renting a car, if you, you know, fly there or anything like that. Um, I know most people drive or take RVs. Um, but yeah, I always recommend doing a car or something like that. That way you have that flexibility to truly fully experience everything um, that comes along with being a travel RT. Obviously it's a little different now with COVID, a lot more stuff shut down. So it's a little bit harder to go and explore. Um, but yeah, always recommend that for sure. So do you want to elaborate a little bit more on how you made the switch from RT to uh, consultant? And then what do you, what exactly do you do as a consultant? Yeah. So my switch kind of began with, again, the overworked and underpaid aspect of it. Um, not that I got fed up with it because I will never talk about it. I feel like I said it was a very special place in my heart, but it was just more or less, you see these SWAT nurses or SWAT RTs come in, um, traveling RTs, all that stuff. And they're coming in and they're making a ton of money and you're making, you know, baseline because I was still considered a new RT, um, wasn't making much more than, you know, your average Joe out there. And I'm sitting there listening to all these people complain about not being able to do the things they want, not being able to be financially free, um, even their job schedule and everything, constantly hearing that. 
And it's one, it's one of those things that, you know, I was so young that I'm like, I love this field. Do I want to do this? Do I want to go on and maybe go to PA school? Do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? So while I was trying to figure it all out, um, I was working in literally insane hours and dealing with a puppy on top of all of that was, well, kind of insane, um, so to speak. So it got to a point where I had worked, geez, like three 16 hour shifts back to back to back. And it was um, overnight. I was doing night shift because I was in school. So I was doing all of that and I was just drained. And I was like, I, I can't do this the rest of my life. Then again, it's also during a pandemic and CVICU is my, is my uh, home. I, what I always call it is my home. Um, and that's where we turned into our COVID unit. So that was already my home. I'm the young one in the unit. Everyone's like, just send her down there, send her down there. And you know, it didn't bother me at all until you're exposed X amount of times. And then next thing you know, you're, you know, worrying about taking them to your family and all that other stuff, which is just everybody's concern in general with our respiratory, not just any specific hospital, but it's just obviously a concern. Um, yeah, after those three 16 hour shifts, I was driving home delirious, trying to make it home, exhausted, physically, mentally, everything. And um, I was like, yeah, I have to make some kind of change. Like something I either have to take a step back since I was able to, you know, make so much money while I was traveling that I can take a step back a little bit, maybe go PRN. Um, I thought about that, kind of already had my license at this point. And I was like, why don't I just, I mean, you know, they always say, if you believe in yourself, you can do anything. So I said, I have enough confidence in myself to be able to move forward and actually take on, you know, a 1099 contracted job and possibly get other things up and running move all at the same time might as well just get it out of the way and hope for the best so uh, me and my boyfriend um had very very long talks about it um kind of went back and forth with the idea of moving down here and kind of just decided to make the switch one day I went in I put my two weeks in and I feel bad and I miss everybody and you know being an RT but the switch has been incredible um I miss it but at the same time being 1099 is kind of very flexible so to speak. Um, it is very stressful because an unlike, you know, respiratory W2 job, you know, if you're going in and clocking in and clocking out, you're getting that paycheck at the end of the week. Um, being 1099 is a little bit different commission only. So you're not guaranteed anything. You know, you can go three months and not make a dime, if, but you have all these expenses coming out, especially because we have our other little small businesses and they're still startups. So they're still, you still need to invest a lot into them. Uh, but it's been really eye-opening for me and it's been a huge learning experience. Um, very, very neat, very complicated in a sense of switching that mindset of, again, that self-motivation and the W-2 where you know you just have to show up and do your job and this one you actually have to show up and you have to put in the work and do all that to make a living. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's the whole 1099 life now and it's, it's great. Like I said, I miss respiratory and I miss the, the traveling part of it, but 1099 is definitely super, super nice self-employed. <laughs> um, and as far as what specifically I do now, um, so I work primarily with traveling RTs, traveling nurses, um, obviously mainly because I was a travel RT, I worked with a ton of nurses um, and I understand where people are coming from. Luckily for me at the time when I was traveling, I was blessed to be able to be on my parents' insurance and they had a, they have a PPO, um, which, PPO obviously just follows you anywhere and everywhere in the country, doesn't matter what state you're in. Um, yeah, so luckily, like I said, I was able to have my parents' insurance, but I, rem I literally remember night shift crew, like constantly, whether it was a nurse, um, an RT, anybody that was traveling, always talking about it. At the time, there wasn't as many travelers as there are now because COVID didn't really hit. It was mostly, you know, people like me that you just kind of want to explore. People with families usually weren't, you know, traveling why would they they have their whole family um so I didn't hear it as much um I do hear it a lot more obviously now traveling has popped off but um yeah so my job I work primarily with traveling RTs traveling RNs um I work with eight recruiters now for different agencies it's kind of cool and um, the reason why I did that they actually reached out to me because they saw a few of my posts um they said that great that I was an RT and well, technically still am I actually just renewed my license a few months ago um keeping up on that for sure <laughs> I worked my butt off for that um but yeah so they reached out to me and we ended up talking and the big reason why they asked to work with me is because um 
the agency's insurance is it's great because you're still going to have coverage you know at least at your area where you're working um the only downfalls of it is one it's typically super super expensive and absolutely insanely expensive um two you either either a have to re-sign up for their insurance through that agency and you have to sign up another contract within 30 days of when your contract ends. So let's just say you do 13 weeks. At this point, you have 30 days to sign up for another assignment or you lose your health insurance. So it's kind of a big downfall for some people because you're working your butt off to be able to, you know, enjoy the time off and be able to go and do things with your family with the money that you're making. And you only have 30 days and some people, you know, are having to travel back home. So that takes two weeks or a week to get back home and then another week to get back somewhere. and now you only have two weeks and then you have to do your stuff at home and all of that craziness. So um, that's a big thing that I, I help all of my travelers do is um, find a health insurance plan that it's not going to matter whether you're working or not. As long as that premium is paid, um, your insurance is, you know, active. Um, another thing is a PPO network. So like I was saying before, coverage that follows you everywhere and anywhere. Um, that's my biggest thing that I always, always, always try and find my travelers because half the time, a lot of my travelers don't even know where they're going to, where they want to go next or where they're going to end up next. So a lot of it is more or less, you know, you want coverage, whether you're in Florida, PA, Wyoming, Texas, you know, Colorado, doesn't matter where you're at, you're going to have that coverage. So um, PBO networks are very, very important for that reason. Um, I usually try and find a low to possibly zero dollar deductible plan. Um, some people know all about deductibles, some people don't, but um, it's just the amount of money that you have to satisfy before, you know, the insurance company will kick in any real benefits for you. So that's my biggest thing is God forbid you were to be on the road. One, let's just say you're, you're me, I'm in Florida. I'm traveling over in Texas for one of the um, crucial assignments or whatever it may be. I'm over there. I have my own insurance. God forbid I fall and break my arm. First, if I have the wrong network, I'm not going to be able to use my insurance over in Texas. I'm going to have to go somewhere else, aka back home, to use my insurance. Second, if that deductible is super high, and let's just say it's only day three of my health insurance plan, and I have an $8,000 deductible, but my bill is $10,000, I'm probably coming out a majority of that eight grand. So it's one of those things that I always try and find that nice balance for my travelers. Um, and then the biggest thing, in my opinion, is I come with any plan that anybody chooses. So I'm like your personal benefit specialist, so to speak. Um, you have any questions for me, you need a doctor looked up, you get a weird bill in the mail that you don't understand. And you're like, what the heck is this thing? You get to call me personally, I give you my personal number. Um, I work literally like a surgeon, like I said before, I think I work more now, um, but not as, not as intense, I swear. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I work pretty much around the clock. Um, I pick up anytime, you know, you, God forbid you would have a heart attack or something. You have to call me and say, hey, Alicia, what do I do? I let you know exactly what to do. I make sure you're going to be covered regardless of any situation. Um, so it's pretty neat that you get to, I don't know, I get to stay with people for the duration of the plan. It's great and really rewarding for me because I miss being an RT. And it's great being able to talk to my RTs, my RNs, and everybody that, you know, can tell me these stories and tell me the great awesome things of helping people and now I get to help those who help others and that's always been my goal at the end of the day before it was you know help as many people as I can when I was an RT and now it's I want to help those who need help that help others it's kind of a weird yeah it's kind of like my my thing that I like doing is <laughs> um but yeah so it's kind of it's kind of neat how it kind of all follows in a giant circle um but yeah so that's pretty much what I do. So you help um, traveling RNs and RTs get insurance. So when I was looking into PA school, I was actually a little worried about this whole situation because my wife works at 1099 and therefore she gets insurance through me, through my work and my W-2. So we were kind of worried, what do we do for health insurance? Um, do you offer in service like that for individuals who are thinking about going back to school who may not have um, health insurance set up for them? Yep. So it's, it's kind of great what I do because I not only, I specifically personally decided to work with traveling RNs and RTs. Um, I can work with anybody out there, which is super nice. Like I said, I primarily work with them mainly because I can really connect with them on a personal level and I love growing that rapport with people. Um, but I also, when I first started, it didn't even occur to me to you know reach out to my RTs and my RNs because it didn't, you know, didn't really cross my mind. 
So originally I was cold calling, literally picked up a phone book and I cold called, Hey, you need health insurance. Hey, can I help you? Hey, can I help you? Yeah. It was, it was a long road, so to speak. Um, and then I started kind of talking to a few business owners down here. Uh, me and my boyfriend were out one night, well, one afternoon with our dogs and we took them down um, to what's called the dog bar in St. Pete and we were just enjoying ourselves, whatever. And so we're talking to this couple sitting next to us and they were 1099 and they owned a few different businesses and you know they asked what we did and I said what I do and everything and they were saying how they needed help with their health insurance. So got on the phone with them, ended up um, writing is what it's kind of called, helping a, um, a small business, well, a few small businesses. And then I work a lot of referrals. So my small business owners will pass on other small business owners. And then a lot of my RTs and RNs also pass on other RNs and RTs. Um, I do offer, offer a really, really great referral bonus. Anybody that anybody sends me that I can help, um, I do give $100 to. And typically, depending on which insurance company they go with, um, the insurance company will match whatever I put in as well. So it's kind of cool that I work based off of referrals, but a lot of pretty much my entire book of business um, is all traveling RTs, traveling RNs, traveling x-ray techs, lobotomist, um, stuff like that healthcare field essentially. And then the other portion is um, small businesses or business owners in a sense. So maybe not the full business group because sometimes they just leave them, you know, their employees to go and find their own. Um, a lot of the times I'll hold that the employer and then they'll pass all my information to employees to see if they would like information on it as well. Um, so I primarily work with self-employed individuals and health, traveling healthcare workers are like my two big main things. And it's funny because a lot of the times, a lot of my traveling RTs, a lot of my traveling RNs will actually their husbands or their wives or their partners, whoever are actually a lot of the times 1099 employees or they're self-employed. And that's why whenever they take a look into their traveling insurance or their agency's insurance, they see how crazy it is. And then they're like, what? I went from paying this working at a hospital to now having to buy my own and now I have to pay this. And it's, and then, you know, their wife, husband, anybody that their significant other um, ends up being 1099. And regardless, they're kind of out finding their own. So it's kind of nice that I get to, I always tell people it's my job to kind of hold your hand and walk you through different options. And then at the end, I say, I kick you out of the nest and I said, okay, fly. Essentially you tell me which plan you like the most or which one you want me to go into a little bit further or explain a little bit more in detail. Yeah. So pretty much anybody and everybody I can help for the most part. Yeah. So I was going to ask if um, you work with specific traveling companies, however, I think you elaborate on that a little bit, how it doesn't matter who you work with, where you work, they can always reach out to you and find the perfect plan. So do you want to talk about some people's plans versus others and why one person's plan may not work for someone else's? Yeah, absolutely. So to start a lot of kind of to explain a little bit about my license and what it allows me to do, because that'll help kind of describe the plan options out there. Um, so me being a license advisor compared to somebody who is just a um, insurance agent, so to speak, my license allows me to view everything and anything on the public marketplace, short-term plans, private marketplace, pretty much anything. Um, and then from there, it kind of depends on, you know, my client's needs and what their wants are. Um, so that's what my license allows me to do, trumping them outside of your employer coverage. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to say, oh, hey, you work for this travel agency, let's get you all signed up with their employer coverage. I can't do that. But anything outside of employer is all me. Um, so what I typically do whenever I get on the phone with anybody and everybody, I always ask them first whenever they reach out to me, um, would you prefer a quote? And I can, I always do some research. I ask for a zip code and date of birth or birth of anybody that they want included in the quote, um, or if they want to set up a time for us to talk. So either one works for me. That, the only reason why I ask that is because I know how much time to schedule off on my calendar. Um, but as for starting with a quote, what I do is I type in their zip code and everybody's date of birth. I have a system that pulls up anywhere from 20 plans to about 300 plans. Um, and then what I do is I go in and I refine a search and I, you know, Lowest premiums, which usually come with a higher deductible, and then lower deductibles, which typically come with a higher premium. Um, I can put in networks, so I can say that this, you know, I know it's a traveler, so I'm going to put in PPO. That way, it only brings up my any PPO option out there. Um, so I do that. I do all my background research, and then I give them a quote range, and the quote range is anywhere from 
$200 to $400. And I hate giving it because it's such a broad range. Um, but even that super high end quote ends up being a lot less than what the travel agency is offering for their baseline. Wow. So it's regardless saving a lot of money. Um, and everyone always calls me a pocket pincher. So I always keep budget in mind. Um, so then after I send that quote, or if somebody says they want to talk, I always set up an appointment. Um, my appointments consist anywhere from five minutes to I've been on the phone with clients for two hours before. Um, and during the call, I either do one of two things. If I need, if you know, you have a list of medications or a list of doctors, I usually just do one initial call. I call it a discovery call on my end, um, just to learn a little bit more about you, your family, or you as an individual and kind of what exactly you're looking for. Um, I write down medications. I write down, um, doctors that you want to keep in network. I do all of that. And then I go back into my search and then those plan options that I already narrowed down from anywhere from, like I said, 20 to 300 plans. I usually narrow them down to about five to 10 options. And then from there I go back in and then I look through each plan and see, you know, okay, did they accept all of these doctors? Which ones accept all of them? Okay, great. These ones do. Now out of this list of four, which ones will they cover these medications? Okay, great. Only these two options. And then set up another appointment. And then I get them on a screen share. So all that is, is I, excuse me, um, send them a link. It just allows them to view my computer screen. It's not like a Zoom call. I do do Zoom calls. I do Zoom calls a lot with my small businesses. Um, but as for my travelers, I usually just do a screen share. But again, if someone would rather talk in person like this, since I can't, you know, fly to Vermont to take them out for coffee and sit down and explain the insurance, um, a screen share is usually what I do. Um, and then I tell them, I explain all kinds of different plan options. Um, so getting into the different plan options now is when you step outside your employer coverage, you're looking at around technically three different options out there, leaving your COBRA aside. Um, I know a lot of my travelers and I usually touch base on talking about COBRA because a lot of my travelers have been offered COBRA or they've heard about it. Um, and they're usually pretty interested in learning of, you know, why is it so expensive? What does it do? All this other stuff. Um, and essentially COBRA is just, an extension of what you were your last plan was, but they charge it at 112% more. So whatever you're paying before, they take that, multiply it by 112, and then that's what your new price is. It's extremely expensive. It's great because you get to keep the same coverage that you had before. So you know you're in a pinch, you need the insurance, you don't know what to do, you take the Cobra for a month or two. It's just something that I wouldn't suggest long term only because it's so expensive and eventually it's usually a year um, that you can use that Cobra, then you have to find something else anyway. So that'll be the first plan option. Like I said, if you're in a pinch, go for it. But I always recommend not just because it's so expensive. Um, and then your next plan option is going to be your short-term plans. So me personally, I don't touch short-term plans. Um, the reason why that I don't, it's the biggest reason is because I come with any plan and I'm your customer service rep. Um, and I always make a joke on the phone, but I'm also serious in the sense of, I don't want you calling me up at three o'clock in the morning saying, hey, Alicia. I just had, I just fell and broke my arm and my insurance company is telling me they're not going to, you know, pay my claim for it. What do I do? It's a whole bunch, a huge mess, essentially. Uh, when you read the fine writing, I go over a lot more detail whenever I do um, my appointments with my clients and everything. Um, and I answer any questions they may have about those. I have a great few great referral partners um, for short-term plans. So if people are actually interested in them, I will send them absolutely. Here's their number, here's their contact info, you can go with them. Um, I'm still gonna be around to help. I always tell people even after, you know, people cancel or anything like that, I'm call me, text me, I don't care either way. I'm still gonna be here for you. Um, even if you have a question about your new employer plan or anything like that, I can still answer them since I know, you know, everything, not everything about insurance, but you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so that's gonna be your second option. Then your third option is gonna be the public marketplace, ACA plans, Obamacare. All of those ones are all the same thing. Um, the public marketplace is all gonna be what's called your guaranteed issued plan. Um, all a guaranteed issued plan is, is anybody and everybody can get on them. So I could be diagnosed with stage four cancer today, sign up for one of these plans, literally in 20 minutes if I wanted to, start it for the first of next month. And then once I meet that deductible, whether that's day two, whether that's day one, whether that's day 64, doesn't matter. As soon as I meet that deductible, I can go get my $4 billion chemo done the next day. So everybody and anybody can get on them. It's a great full coverage option. Um, the biggest reason why we place people on the public marketplace is because of A, 
if you qualify for some government assistance. So if you, you know, your family or yourself don't make enough and you can get a little bit off. And I always tell people, you know, probably shouldn't say this, but take what you can get from the government these days. I mean, it's a pandemic and everything. You might as well take the discount if you can, discount, so to speak. Um, so that's the first reason why we place somebody on the public marketplace. And then the second reason is due to any kind of major pre-existing conditions. So if you have, you know, diabetes, um, if you do have cancer or anything like that, only because regardless, once you make that deductible, you can at least get on a plan that's going to cover you. Um, and I'll explain why some of the different plans are different from those ones. If you have those pre-existing conditions, um, I will say for my RTs and nurses out there, um, make sure if you do qualify for some government assistance this year, because um, it's based off of last year's taxes, to talk to your accountant, financial advisor, or anything like that. Sorry, I don't know what that kid's doing. Sorry, you might edit that part out. I don't know what the heck that kid's doing. <laughs> You're good. Um, anyway, so. Uh, sorry. I just like need to get back on track on my mind. And keep this is about distracted. RTs and nurses if they're looking for a specific plan. That's what it is. Okay, perfect. <laughs> All right, good. Um, yeah, I will say that if you are a traveling nurse or traveling RT and you um, traveling first time or whatnot, and then you know you talk to me, it looks like you do qualify for some government assistance, or you just talk to anybody in general, or you even go on yourself because you don't have to have a license to see the public marketplace option. Um, I usually go on there to reference it quite a bit just because it's a little bit easier. Um, but if you do qualify for it, I always recommend talking to your CPA, um, financial advisor, anybody that really knows a lot about taxes and everything. Um, mainly for the reason being for subsidies, you wanna make sure that you're either gonna be making the exact same amount or you're gonna be making less of anything. Only because if you make even a dime over what you were you know, projected to make or what you made the year before, what the government's going to do is take um they're going to look at you know your following year and everything like that and they're going to see that what you put down isn't what you made and then they're going to ask for any subsidy that you got throughout the year back all at one time at the end of the year so if you do qualify for government assistance and again if you know people want to ask me about it i'm more than happy to answer out any questions but i always recommend talking to an accountant or a tax expert of some sort and before agreeing to that subsidized rate. Um, public marketplace, great full coverage option, like I said. To be honest with you, it was really intended for two types of individuals. One who you know qualifies for quite a bit off of your health insurance. And then two, um, any major pre-existing conditions. Excuse me, I keep, I have like a three flashes. <laughs> uh, sorry, that sucks. Um, but yeah, so the public marketplace is really intended for those kind of individuals. Um, the premiums tend to be a little bit higher. It's still probably going to save you money compared to an agency plan. Um, and then the deductibles tend to be a little bit higher as well. And the networks, depending on your zip code, can be pretty restrictive. So it's all zip code based. So, you know, I, me personally, where I live right now, I can't get a PPO on the public marketplace. If I have an employer option, I can't. But somebody in Fort Worth, Texas will say they might have on the public marketplace, once you put the zip code in, um, you might be able to get a PPO. It's all zip code based. So that's the only thing with the public marketplace, but what I really like about it is one, every single one of those plans are gonna have a max out of pocket, which is the number one thing I look for in any insurance plan. Two, it's a full coverage option. So you're gonna have all bases covered. You're gonna have your preventative, your wellness, your catastrophic, you're gonna have um, accident, mental you know, awareness or anything like that, um, or mental health, I'm sorry. Anything like that, they're going to have that coverage for. So regardless, I love any of the uh, public marketplace plans for that reason. Um, and then your last way, which is what I work a lot with, is going to be the private plan. Um, now, the private plans, anybody that does not have a 215 license, you cannot go online and look these up. You can't type in, you know, something, something private health insurance. It's not going to pull anything up for you. You have to have a license in order to view the plan, which means people out there have to go through a licensed advisor like myself. Um, the biggest reason why I really, really like the private plans are one, it seems to be the most, the biggest bang for your buck, so to speak. Um, I'm actually on a private plan myself. Um, luckily I was already in insurance whenever I, uh, <laughs> been looking for plans myself because I would have been, whew, that would have been a disaster when I was an RT because I knew nothing about it. Um, 
but yeah, so it's the best bang for your buck. Um, they're going to be a PPO option. So you're going to have that nationwide coverage regardless of where you're at. Um, those private plan options tend to have a low to a zero dollar calendar year deductible. So a big reason why I work with private plans is one, the networks, uh, they're going to be that PPO option. So you're going to have nationwide coverage, any doctor, any hospital, essentially, you know, in the country. Uh, that's the biggest, one of the biggest things I look for, for my travelers, because let's be honest, what's the point in investing in insurance every single month if you can't even use it? At that point, you're, you're doing it just to raise your hand up at the end of the year to say you have it. Um, so that's one of the biggest reasons. The second biggest reason is going to be uh, the deductibles. They tend to be a little bit lower. Um, so a low to zero dollar deduct calendar year deductible to satisfy. So those, you know, you get first dollar benefits from essentially anything and everything. Um, just like the public place, public marketplace, it's gonna cover everything. It's not gonna be like those short-term plans. It's gonna only cover certain things. Um, and then another big reason why I work with private plans is gonna be because it gives you preferred rate on your health insurance. So it's not a government subsidized rate. It doesn't matter what you made. It doesn't matter if you're employed, not employed, um, self-employed, not self-employed, doesn't matter what you make. It gives you a preferred rate for being healthy. So it's gonna save you money and it's gonna beat the public marketplace plans um, price-wise and it's going to beat the um, travel agency plans price-wise. Um, some cases for the public, First, the private, it's going to be around the same price. Um, that's typically whenever you have families and stuff, and you want to add the dental and the vision and everything, um, which is also nice about private plans. And you can usually do a bundle deal. So you're looking for medical, dental, and vision. You can do all three. Completely customizable there. Um, you want medical, dental, and life insurance? We can do that. You want, you know, whatever the case may be. You get all of these extra benefits, and it's all in one package. The public side, you kind of got to go different places for them. Um, it's still great, but kind of nice. Again, it's all in what you want in a plan. Now, the biggest, biggest difference between a public and a private plan is the public plans are all, or, geez, sorry, the private plans um, are all health-based plans. So you have to be approved for them. So not everybody and anybody is going to be a fit for it. You know, somebody that already has stage four cancer is not going to be able to get on one of these plans. Um, but a lot of people think that when I say that, that, you know, if they go on a private plan, the stage four cancer is never going to be covered. It's not the case at all. You'll always have coverage for stuff like that. It's just about um, being able to be approved for the plan, so to speak. So it's kind of a process. It's an application, and everything. Um, but as soon as you're approved, you're on it, you're good. And then if you were to get diagnosed with, you know, a stage four cancer, it's going to be covered. It's just a matter of being able to get on that plan. Uh, the reason why they do that is going to be because so the public marketplace is um, a larger risk pool of people, if that makes sense. So since it's a guaranteed issue plan, you have some people over here that are gonna be the stage four cancers. You're gonna have some people over here that are the completely healthy individuals. Some people down here that have diabetes, some people over here that, you know, I can't even think of anything, has tuberculosis. Um, you have all these different people. So the public marketplace is constantly dishing out money and claims, right? Because anybody and everybody can get on these. Um, they're not allowed to deny anybody for these plans compared to the private side where it's an approval process. So they do a, um, they pull your prescription profile, look at it, and they put in, if they classify you as high risk, um, they recommend you go on the public side because then that's why you get a preferred rate because you're in a lower risk pool of people. So now your box is this big instead of, you know, this big of 50 million different people in it that have 50 million different diseases, conditions, all this stuff, different stuff. Now you're on a private plan that your risk for people is this big and you're taking out all that extra stuff that you don't need to pay for. So, you know, if you don't need psychology treatments um, 24 seven, or, you know, you're going eight days a week to a psychiatrist and you want that coverage, you're going to be probably considered high risk and you're probably better off to go on the public side. Um, so that's kind of the biggest difference there is the preferred rate health-based and then the guaranteed issued public plan. Um, and then for private insurance as well, like I was saying, this is a preferred rate, but what else is really cool as well for my business owners out there, it's um, a tax write-off as well. So at the end of the year, you can write it off on your taxes. So it's pretty neat there as well. It has a lot of advantages to it. Um, one last thing I wanted to touch on because I don't, don't want to forget it is 
the easiest way to explain, you know, a private plan to somebody is it works like car insurance in a sense. So if I have a really, really bad driving record, but you have a really, really good driving record, we're probably not paying the same, you know, to drive on the road. You're probably paying a lot less than I am. Um, and I swear I don't have a bad driving record. <laughs> I'm a bad driver, but not a bad driving record. Um, no, but yes, yeah, so that's the biggest thing is it's kind of like car insurance. Um, we're probably not paying the same if you have a better driving record than I do. Same thing with the private side. If you're healthy enough to qualify for a plan, you're going to be able to pay a little bit less than those who are unhealthy because you're putting that smaller risk full of people. So it's kind of the easiest way to explain. I know it's a lot, but it's hard to explain just one little piece of it. Um, that's the different plan options and kind of why one plan would be a better fit for somebody over another. Yeah. I do know that with health insurance, there's just so much that goes into it. And I think if anyone has any questions or they're interested at all, they should definitely get in contact with you because you can answer those uh, questions directly and come up with a specific plan and what's right for them. Absolutely, absolutely. And I know a lot of people always have, um, especially my travelers, always have a question about like HSAs and, you know, which plans are HSA compatible and all of that. Um, more than happy to help with all of that stuff as well. So if people want to get in touch with you, um, they want to find you on social media, maybe they have questions, anything like that. Um, where can they reach you? So I work primarily off of my Facebook. Um, I have a business page and I have a um, personal one as well. Honestly, whatever is easiest. Um, my business one is going to be at Alicia, E-L-I-C-I-A, Health Advisor. Um, that's the Facebook one. And then for my Instagram, it's just pal, P-O-W-E-L-L, -L, underscore health, H-E-A-L-T-H. Um, so that's my Facebook and my Instagram. That's what I primarily work off of. I work a ton off of referrals. And then um, I also have a website. So it's just www.elishacares.com, E-L-I-C-I-A-C-A-R-E-S. Dot com and then uh, my primary email that I use for pretty much all business related stuff it's a personal business email um, that one is just Elisha health advisor at gmail.com so e-l-i-c-i-a h-e-a-l-t-h a-d-v-i-s-o-r-s um, oh no s at the end I'm so sorry I just didn't check that <laughs> but advisor at gmail.com uh, any way that you reach out to me, I'm pretty on top of everything. If I don't get back to you um, right away, I would give it at least 24 hours. I've been pretty busy recently, but I always get back to anybody. And then also feel free to text or call me at any point. Um, my personal number is 724-996-5894. Um, I always have my phone on me. And if I'm busy or in a hospital, because I was sick for a while, um, either one, um, I'll always either text you back or I'll listen to your voicemail. I always recommend a voicemail. I have gotten a ridiculous amount of car warranty calls in the past few months and they're still coming and I tried everything to get them to stop and they won't. So if I don't answer the phone, just leave a voicemail and I'll always get back to you, whether I shoot you a text or we set up a time to talk. Um, I work around the clock. I've taken appointments at 2 a.m. before for my nighttime people. Um, I work pretty much 24 seven. So I kind of work to uh, fit your schedule and you know, everyone else's needs out there. So feel free to contact me whenever or however is easiest for you guys. Now, is there anything else that you want to talk about before I kind of wrap it up? I don't think so. No, if um, anybody wants or needs anything, if you have, you know, you want a quote just to kind of compare what you're paying now, you want to send me a brochure because you want to see if your plan is a good plan or not. You want to actually just talk to me and kind of find out a little bit more about, you know, traveling information, um, insurance information, whatever the case may be. Um, feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to help anybody and everybody out there. That's awesome. I just want to thank you for coming on and just sharing everything with everyone and just sharing your knowledge. Of course. Thanks, Austin, so much. I appreciate you having me and um, I look forward to hearing from anybody that I can help. And um, yeah, thank you so much, Austin. I appreciate it. Of course. So make sure you guys uh, go check her out. Thanks, guys.